Hi everybody, I'm Dominic from MaxMeDIY.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to wire a 220 volt outlet, say for a dryer, that's going to be what they consider a four wire. I made the video once before, just for the two wire, using the two hots and a uh, ground for the 220 volt. This is a lot different. This is when an outlet, no matter what amperage it is, uh, 220 volts, but it's looking for that fourth wire, which would be that neutral wire, otherwise known as a return path. Here's the outlet that we're going to be installing. This is a 30 amp for a dryer. And if you look, we have one, two, three, four. They're going to be our two hots, right? Now, both the same, doesn't matter. Our, our neutral right here, and now our ground. So that's a four wire, okay? Uh, and this is the panel we're going to be doing. So let me take you over here and show you exactly what we're looking for first. All right, you see we have our panel here which is a 200 amp panel, not that it really matters to you. We took our cover off, and it's always a great idea to turn your main pat your breaker off before you access your panel here, because, now if you look here, uh, notice how I'm using a screwdriver, although I say that the panel is off, but you always want to treat it like it's on. We have our bus bar, so we have one here, and we have one here, and you can see this other one uh, coming the way it wore these little fingers on it, okay? Now, if you look at this one, you can clearly see uh, you got a blade here, which is supplying the breaker, and then it's going to skip one, and it's going here. Now, this one, you can see the end of it here. That's actually using the bus bar here. Now, if you look up here, as the, the electric comes in, we have our two hots. You got a hot one here, hot there, you have your neutral, okay? If you notice, a ground does not come in from the street, because that's because we're going to use the grounds that are coming here from our grounding rods, which all the way come down to our grounding bar here. And if you look, we have our neutral uh, bar over here, okay? They are connected together in here, which is, you know, code you need that, okay? That's a different, different time, different story. What we're looking for is our, our space, obviously, for whatever amperage we're gonna use. And now we're not gonna talk about amperage, we're only gonna deal with the volts, okay? Because uh, you're a different amperage, you're the length of the line, eh, a lot of it matters, okay? So we're not showing that. But what we are looking for is a spot that we have uh, to put our new 220 volt uh, breaker. Now it's a twin pole breaker, you see what it looks like. Don't look at the amperage now. All right, now if we look, we got our space, and obviously I made sure we did, but we well, we got plenty of other room here. But now you look up here. Well, we only have space for a single pole breaker, so obviously that wouldn't fit there, but we can fit it here. And I'll give you an idea. Uh, again, your breakers uh, may look a little different. Uh, on this particular one, which is a GE, this is the way we're gonna handle. These little blades are gonna fit right inside the breaker, nice and tight, just like that, both of them. So if you look, we're gonna grab, we're gonna grab the one hot leg over here, we're gonna grab the other hot leg over here. Not two different phases, this is all a single phase unit, but it's just two different legs, 110 volt each, which is going to supply, you guessed it, 220. Okay, we're going to put our breaker in, like that. Nice and firmly put, making sure that it's off. Next step, we have our wire. Okay, our wire, again, is dependent on the amperage. If you look at our wire, this is going to be for a four wire. We have our black, which is going to be hot, coming from our one leg, our red wire, which is also gonna be hot, coming from the other leg. Now, I already started putting it in and decided to make the video, so got a little bit started here. And if you look here, we got our white wire, which is our neutral wire, which is going to our neutral bus bar. If you look right in there, you can see it's nice and secured, okay? Our ground wire, I had done the same thing. Here it is here, and it's going right here to our ground bar, okay? Now, let's go back to our breaker. Our breaker, now, let me pull this breaker back out so I can show, just, just turn something off. Oh, that's okay, the whole panel's off, right? Okay, check the breaker out. These are our, our hot legs here where our wire is gonna go in. This is what we're looking for it to do. We're gonna put the wire in there, and the other wire and the other one. And we're going to tighten these screws up nice and tight so it's not to make a bad connection, but we're not going to tighten it like we're putting a car tire on. Now, 
Pay attention. I already stripped this wire here. Now pay attention. Look closely on that when I put that in. You see that? If you can, only a little bit, you can see. You know, you want to know that you are indeed making contact with that whole wire and that you're not too short here where you're actually putting that screw and it's hitting half the wire and half the, the, the sheath of the wire. You don't want to do that. Very important you do that. Uh, that's another way to cause some fire. So I'm going to go throw this breaker back in here and start connecting the wires on this side and then once I'm done with that then we'll start with the actual outlet itself. Okay, you see I wired our breaker here now. Now if you look I have extra wire here. Now it may look a little ugly, you might be wondering why did I do that. Simple. Okay, remember I was explaining earlier that we had needed to find a space for our 220? Well, suppose later on we're doing some more uh, additions and we're putting some breakers and we may need to move a couple of them around. Well, it's a lot easier trying to move this breaker, say, to the other side later if we had to. And that's why we leave that little extra like that. It just makes things easier because, I, in fact, I do know that later on we will be moving things around. So that's a good possibility. Uh, otherwise, that's pretty much it. So I only, would only be able to go lower, not higher, or anywhere else. At least now, I just leave myself that. Okay. Now, like, like I said, I went, went and already started this video. Here, you have your little punch outs all over the panel. Uh, right here, we punched out our little plug, and we have a, a Romex connector. This is what I oops, dropped my little nut here. Well, not my little nut, but the nut for the. You get it, right? Okay. Anyway, so. This is our Romex connector. I punched out our box. Now this is our big little metal box right here. This is what we're looking to do. We're looking to put it into the right size knockout there and put the nut on. How we install it on the wire, which is a lot easier, I feel, doing it on the wire. I guess it all depends. If you look, we're going to leave about a quarter inch of sheath showing past this Romex connector. And that's, I mean, for a lot of reasons. Obviously, this is metal, so we're clamping down on it. So what we don't want to do is, uh, again, inadvertently squeeze down over bare metal, if that was the case, because we were too, we, kept, we cut the wire too short or something. And as well, a lot of electrical inspectors will fail you if they don't see that, simply because they can't tell where you are in relationship to that, okay? Did you cut the wire too short? Blah, 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 okay? So that's another good reason on that. I made it tight, snug. I mean, we're not, you know, we're not towing a car with it, so I didn't t cramp it down that tight, all right? Now, got it like that, all right? Now, I already cut and sized the wire. Now, we're gonna throw it in the box here. Now, this is really thick wire for what we're using, um, which, of course, you know, we need it, right? Why? Because of the amperage uh, we're going to be pulling. Okay, we got it up in there. It's pretty strong. Now we're going to get the nut like that and put the nut on. Now this is a metal box. Um, when you're dealing with the bigger, heavier wires, that's what you're looking for is the bigger boxes. You're not going to get a plastic box for it. I mean, you're not. And we want to tighten the nut up. Just get a screwdriver and little edges on it, and you can, like that. Kind of important, you want that nice and strong, because if the wire was to move, get yanked, you know, you want to keep it there. All right, now, we're going to get on to doing our outlet. Now, it's really simple. I mean, the host, this whole video is probably going to take 10 minutes, but in actuality, it's actually like a, a five-minute job I'm not talking to anybody. Right, one more. Let's go over the wires here. Our ground wire. Our hot wire or other hot wire and now this is our neutral wire okay real important especially if you have a um, the newer stoves the newer dryers that you have a lot of the electronic stuff on the dryer all those little computers and stuff like that well they're not necessarily operating at 220 volt they're going to be operating at 110 volt so essentially this is what we're doing if you take you know, a, a, a neutral and the hot lead right here. 
if we're going to go all the way to the dryer, and that's what the dryer is going to use. It's going to take a little piece of the neutral, then take a little piece of the hot. That's going to give it the 110 to where it wants to use for the computers and stuff like that. But your actual, your heating elements for your electric stove or oven or your dryer, no, they're going to be using these two hots for the 220 volt, okay? So let's show you how we actually connect the outlet and all that stuff and then test it. Okay, now we are all ready to do our connections to our outlet. Now remember, the panel is off, it's been off, and so we don't have any threat of getting electrocuted here. Make sure the breaker is off, or actually don't even put the breaker in yet. You can actually do that last, which probably would have been a smarter thing to do. But who said it was more? Okay, let's look at the outlet again. Now this one here is a 30 amp one for your, your dryer, okay? i put the right way up. You got your two hots. You see these both look the same? Okay, well, left side, right side. These are the two hots. That's we're gonna be connecting our red and our black one. This bottom one here is our neutral. This one here is our ground. Look at the ground here, okay? Here's our screw. We're gonna put the wire in. If you look here, then it's grounding the metal plate for this outlet, which essentially is gonna ground it to this box and whatever else, and the actual dryer itself. Now, I always like to start with the two hots. Why? I don't know. Get them out of the way. So you look, both sides, turn it around, both sides, in this case. Now if you look, these are where we're making our connections here. Put our one, our one lead right in there. Again, making sure you cut enough of the covering of the wire off. Tighten the screw down. Okay, making it, you know, snug like that for the moment. Put our other hot lead in. We're going to make it snug for the moment. We're going to get our neutral wire. Okay, if you look there, remember the, memory, the center, we can go back to it. Okay, the bottom center over here. Like that. All right, we're going to snug that down. Okay, snug it down. Now our ground wire, which is coming over on the side here. Okay, and we're going to snug that down. Okay, what I like to do, I just snug them all down like that, make sure that they all look good. Now I want to tighten them up pretty good because we don't want to make sure they don't, we don't have a loose connection. We want to make sure they don't come out. All that good stuff, okay? So real, real important here. And believe me, you think you'll have them tight enough, and I'm going to show you just in one second how you can screw this up real good. Okay. Now, if I were to cut this wire a lot shorter, it would have been a lot harder to connect this or service it later on, but it would have made it a lot easier to fit it into this box. If you see here, well, it's going to be a little difficult. Well... Another reason why I want to keep these wires nice and tight. I'm going to shape them to go around the box in there. In this case, the wire's coming up, so I might want to just wrap it around. Okay, it can be done. Uh, the bigger box, yes, blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, so good luck with that. It's not always that easy. Uh, I'll be back as soon as I'm done. Okay, check it out. Outlet cover and outlet is on. Our panel cover is on. Here is our breaker that we installed. Everything looks good, all the breakers are intact. We got our main power back on. So, basically, if we turn this breaker on, shouldn't see anything, or hear anything, or smoke, or fire, or maybe worse, okay? Ready? The big finale. Bang! Ah, all good, okay. Check it out. Now we're gonna test it. Remember what I showed you? You have your our ground, our neutral, and our two hots, right? It's on, it's live, so all those people who wanna yell at me. It's a tester, we have to test it on. Okay, check it out. Let's get a close up of this, okay? We have our ground wire, doesn't matter which one, no. We're gonna pop that into our, our neutral, actually. And if you look at our tester, we're lighting up 120 volt, okay? We're gonna to go to the other, other hot over here. Now we should also have 120, 
Okay? Now, if we just leave that into our hot, uh, hard to get in here with this tester, and we can go to our, our ground. Okay? Also, ah, this thing's hard to make connection in here. Okay, also, 120. Now, so we're checking all our connections, okay? We're going to go to our other hot. And we also have 120. Okay, honky dory. But the video wasn't to show you how to make 120 volt outlet now, was it? 220 volt. Now, this is how we test it. Now, if you've ever been shocked by 120, it'll wake you up, right? Now, we're going to be putting this into 220. So, just be a little bit more careful. So, we're going to go to each leg, and now we're looking for this light right here to tell us 220 volts. And there we go. You see both of them are lit up, telling us 220 volts. See how that works? So, pretty good. Hey, one more thing. Check it out. Go to the ground. Go to the hot lead. 120 volt. Go to your hot lead. Go to the ground. See that? So, we, so it's also testing the grounding of our actual box. Real important, okay? Anyway, that's how you install... In this case, a 30 amp, but what we're really looking for is 220 volt outlet using what's called a four wire. So we have our two hots, a ground, and our neutral. What's a neutral a lot of people ask? It's a return path of electricity that say cannot be used. Something like that, okay? But we're not going to get too technical. That's how you do it. Don't shock yourself. I'm Dominic from XBDIY.com. Thanks for watching.